Full pages. So, welcome to 100% LCFC TV, Dave. Good to be back, Phil. Not seeing you for a little while. No, it is good and not a bad day. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? The last 12 hours have just been mad. Um, we were talking just before we came on camera. Both phones, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp. Oh, you name it. It's it's just going mad out there, isn't it? Everybody's just... I don't think anybody in Leicester slept last night, to be honest. No, I know I didn't. I had a, a weird dream. I, well, I don't know if I slept or if I was daydreaming or whatever. I dreamt that we, um, we were at Wembley, which of course we will be, in the Community Shield. Yeah. I actually dreamt that we played Crystal Palace for some reason, but then they are in the FA Cup final. Yeah. Um, uh, God knows what the result was. I was just excited to be there. So. It wasn't a 1-0 with Claret Shinning one in, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, maybe it was. Maybe it was a flashback. <laughs> no, anyway, um, Dave, what, what a season. It's indescribable, isn't it? I mean, for a team like Leicester, I mean, we keep saying little old Leicester, but maybe we're not little anymore. You know, we've always been viewed as a, a bit of a yo-yo club. You know, we, we hold our own sometimes in the top league do okay obviously in the second tier we had our little foray down into league one which uh, yeah you know we all know about but this team of players has just gone phenomenal you know you can see every interview everybody that talks about them when you see the players interview they're just so tight together and it's just i think it's just a victory for sport it's just a victory for the the hard working players that aren't superstars i mean that's you saw the videos of the players all around Jamie Vardy's having a party last night. But that was that was exactly the same as when we got to promotion two seasons ago. Um, they they did the same thing there. It was it was a very similar bunch of players. Nucleus is the same, isn't it? You know, one or two additions, obviously, that we know about. Um, the likes of um, Okazaki and, you know, uh, Kante and people like that that obviously have added significant quality this year. But it is, it is it's very much still the nucleus of the, the squad that, we have to pay tribute to the squad, the squad that Nigel built. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. Nigel Pearson brought us out of League One, back up into the Championship, steadied out the team, I think sorted out lots of things at the training ground, and of course the owners as well. It was that combination of yes. Pearson and uh, the owners building. They've started to put some foundations into the club, haven't they, really? They have, and they're saying now, you know, we're not looking to sell any players, which obviously we're, we all don't want us to sell any players. You know, Champions League football is beckoning now. Um, we can't afford to lose any quality. We've got to try and probably add quality to the surround of the, the main squad. So if you take the 16 players, 18 players that, that have regularly played, we need to add to that now. We, we probably have got to release one or two players that have done brilliant for us, but maybe you know at the end of the road. There's been a lot of talk on social media about who should or who might or might not be going. Um, people like Vasilevsky have been brilliant for us in their time. You know, do we need now to, to have some more quality to help Hooth and Morgan out? You know, there's been a lot of talk about us being very lucky with injuries. And when you look at it, maybe we have. You know, if we'd have had a couple of significant injuries, what would we have done? Um, Vasilevsky has come in and done a decent job at times, but he's also had a couple of rushes of blood to the head like he did at, at Arsenal. Yeah. You know, uh, we haven't seen that too much from Hooth and Morgan. Bit of grappling here and there, which I've got to say, that's becoming more and more prevalent in the game. And I don't like to see it personally. Yes, it's a man's game. Yes, it's physical. But I don't go with all the holding and pushing and shoving and wrestling when there's a call. Or hair sides. pulling. Or hair pulling. Or elbows to the face either. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, there's plenty um, of that. I mean, uh, just talking of the Spurs game, Spurs at Chelsea, that last 20 minutes was ferocious in many different ways, wasn't it? London derby, I get that. Yeah. Um, you know, we have our own derby battles from time to time. Maybe we might have one next year. Who knows? Um, they've still got a bit, bit of work to do yeah. themselves. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's always going to be a bit ferocious, a local derby, but way over the top, wasn't it, last night? I think Spurs just completely lost their discipline, which I was surprised about. Um, we spoke earlier on off camera. Had they have, in that last 13 minutes, refocused, gone for it again? We've been in similar situations. You know, we've, we've had to come back from 2-0 down this season, um, particularly thinking about the Aston Villa game at home where we were 2-0 down. Our heads could equally have gone. Yeah. You know, and our players have dug in, they've got together, and uh, and dug out a result, but last night it was it bordered on uh, bordered on disgraceful, really, didn't it? Some of those tackles certainly were. I mean, from a Leicester's point of view, Eden Hazard, however you say it, 
suddenly uh, scored a title-winning goal. Um, I've I've read somebody, I can't remember who it was, forgive me, there's been that many messages to 100% LCF, so thank you to everybody from around the world. But somebody said I've, that they'd promised themselves whoever scores the title-winning goal, they're going to have him on next year's uh, Leicester City shirt. And he's, he said to me, he said, I'm going to have Hazard on the back, <laughs> which is going to be peculiar. But uh, it wouldn't be a bad signing, by the way. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> if um, he's fed up at Chelsea, he looked amazing last night. Yeah, he did. And he's been out for a large part of the season, hasn't he? Um, but he played a huge part in the game last night, turning turning their fortunes around. Um, but would you go with Hazard being the one, or would you go with Wes Morgan from Sunday being the one? Uh, well, yes. Well, it was Hazard, <laughs> to be fair. That was the goal that did it. Well, yeah, but so if Morgan hadn't have scored on Sunday... There's the there's the scarf. We said we said that scarf had fall down. That's blue tack, Dave. Come come back in this way because the camera. Um, um, no, if if Morgan had to score it on Sunday, yeah, and we'd have lost that game one nil. If Spurs yes, had so got the draw last night, it'd still be in the melting pot. Yes, so yeah, Morgan's no, I agree. It was important. Crucial, yeah, a draw for Spurs would have been good enough. They could have still got two more wins. And, and have us under pressure for goal difference. I've got to be honest, uh, earlier on in the season, I was saying Morgan doesn't weigh in with enough goals, but he, he's he's proved many people, including myself, in the second half of the season, but with some vital goals, as has Ujoa, you know, Okazaki, all these players have, uh, you know, it might be an odd goal here and there, but yeah. we've got Jamie Vardy on his 20 plus goals. And uh, I hope. Jamie on now, 21, 22. Yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to see him go mental on one well, in the right way against Everton and get a hat trick or something and maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's win the, the golden the boot. Now. That's the Iceland, isn't it? You yeah, know, if you get, would... ja get Jamie back in. I mean, that's the unfortunate thing about Jamie missing two goals. You know, would he have scored another couple of goals, got himself a bit closer to the golden boot? We've now only got two go games to go for him to do that. Um, might be a bit of a stretch for him, but like you say, you know, let's go and uh, go mental on Sunday. Do what we did against um, Swansea. And if Jamie had played against Swansea, and I think if he'd have played against Man U. I think it would have suited him. Dave, I can see it down there. You're, we've got lucky gnomes on 100% LCF, so we do lucky likes, we do lucky anything, we wear lucky pants. Go on, bring out the lucky little fox. Well, we, we, several Come people in here and stop, make sure. Several people have talked talk to me about these little fellas. Um, I bump into people occasionally that have bought them at the ground, and one guy said to me as we came out of the ground at the last game, he said, it's all down to the foxes in the boxes. Yeah. Because uh, obviously when I ship them out, they're in their own little box. Um, and we started doing these after we got promoted. Yeah. So we've sold quite a few of them, and, and, and a lot of people love them. Um, they're they're hand-sculptured, UK-made, um, so they're not moulded, they're nothing else. When you look at them, the blue is inside the glass, and the white is inside the glass. The, the pictures sometimes don't do them justice, but they have been really popular. So what I have said is, for anybody that's interested, we're going to start mounting them on a little marble base. We'll have a, a brass plate on them, simply saying... Premier League Champions 2016. It's a little special edition. So if, if you want to yeah. get one, that's Dave's sales pitch over <laughs> with. Um, we've got the hat, the Dilly Dong. Yeah, Dilly Dilly Ding, Dilly Dong. <laughs> yeah. we, can't, we can't let an interview go without Dilly Ding, Dilly Dong. Um, I mean, that's been a huge part yeah. of the last few weeks, hasn't it? Um, Mr. Ranieri and his Dilly Ding, Dilly Dong. Bless him. Um, but I don't think anybody cares what they look like anymore because Leicester fans just look fantastic at the moment, don't they? Absolutely. So uh, we've got the champion scarves that we both bought. I bought one completely by mistake about five <laughs> weeks ago for my daughter. And uh, I thought I'd put the kiss of death on it. You bought some, but you were like... Yeah, I bought it. I stuck it in the cupboard. Um, but it came out last night. So Premier League champions, we can see it now. We can touch it. We can believe it. Um, but the scarf I've got my, around my neck is the lucky one. The lucky scarf. This is one that was bought for me by my son for my birthday. Um, didn't wear it to go to the West Ham game. I yep. know what happened there. Yeah, I was sat there last night watching the, the game at home on my own. Bit of a Billy No Mates, but I was sat there watching the game on my own. I had my Leicester shirt on, 2 0 down. And I thought, I better go and fetch the scarf. So I sat the second half with the scarf around my neck. So it's obviously all down to the scarf. Well done, lads, but it's all down to the scarf. Sorry. <laughs> it was a bit like cheering Leicester on. It was nice. Chelsea were at least in blue last night. <laughs> I said to my lads at half time, come on, it's two, but they're 2 0 down. We can, we can come back into this. Yeah. So it was, a, it was an amazing, weird atmosphere watching it. But uh, uh, what a. What a game, Dave. What a season. Wembley to come. come. Who's going on a European tour? Everybody. <laughs> My missus is telling me off, but I'm saying, yeah, we're going. The kids are already booking time off school, but you yeah. didn't hear that here. Um, <laughs> going to be brilliant, isn't it? So uh, thanks thanks for joining us, Dave. We've got to ride the wave, haven't we? You know, this is just phenomenal for our club. I, I genuinely think it could be the start of something for a few seasons. You know, a massive influx of money coming from winning these things, but the owners have been brilliant anyway with their input, and I think that'll continue. Yeah. So I don't think we need to worry about financial stability at all. Um, 
We've won the league. We've played with style. We've only been beaten three times. There's no reason why we can't go and attract some decent players. Maybe not the world world best players, but we should be going to, able to go out there now and attract some really good players to help us in the Champions League. And as the lads have said, you know, we're not going there to make the numbers up. We're going to go there and have a little bit of a go. Nobody's deluded enough to think at the moment we win the champion, Champions League. I am. Yeah. I think we will. But, Dave, I think we're going to win it. I was just going to say, but I'm going down the bookies today. Who's, who's I'm going to put money on it. Who said who we cares? Would, you know, yeah. All the people that put bets on at the start of the season, and fair play to every single yeah. one of them, by the way. Um, but I'd like to know how many genuinely thought that bet was going to come in. And I'm guessing there's none. But, you know, fair play. Put your tenner on. You know, put 50 quid on, whatever. Um, but from now on, dreaming's believing, isn't it? It is. Dave, did you did you ever think it would happen? Did you ever think we'd win the, the my, top my, division? No, not in my lifetime, to be honest. And I've been following Leicester since I was a young boy. My distant memory goes back to the 69 Cup final. Yeah. And I know I went to games with my uncle before that in the popular stand, or the East Stand, as it, as it was called at Filbert Street. But I particularly remember sitting on the wall at the uh, the Man City, Leicester City FA Cup final that we lost 1-0. And I've never, ever dreamt that we would be no. big enough to compete with the, the big boys. Um, it is absolutely dreams come true stuff. But, you know, after the Man City game, me and my son went up to the Man City game and we played them off the park that day. And we came away from there and we went, do you know what? I actually start to believe that we could do this now. Yeah. And for me, that was a huge, huge game and a huge turning point. And I think the world media all of a sudden sat up and took notice. Prior to that little spell, everybody said, well, here's Leicester now. They're going into... Um, I think it was Arsenal away, Liverpool at home, Man City away. If they get through there with even two points, they'll have done well. We only lost to Arsenal because we had 10 men, possibly, and a very late um, yeah. rash challenge, possibly, by Vasilevsky, as we said. Um, and then beat Liverpool with that stunner from Jamie. Goal and, of the season. And played and played Man City off the park. And from that point, the media started to go, do you know what? They can do it. This could happen. This really could happen. We can, and we did. Thanks for joining us, Dave. No problem. Enjoy Look, everybody out there. Go and have your drinks. Go and have your celebrations. <laughs> Make the most of every single minute because these are the times of your lives. See you Saturday. Enjoy.